Hello everybody. Welcome to rigging tutorial in Maya. Today I'm going to rig a cubic model in Maya using a Maya uh, joints and skeleton system. Basically, we will go through uh, the process step by step and we will not uh, leave any point unclear and vague. Okay. You see the name of the chapter is how to rig a simple cube. My email address is written here. If you have any question or problem or comment or request, you can send it to this mail address. And here you see my web blog address uh, uh, based on uh, WordPress.com. Okay. Uh, so, what is really rigging? Rigging is the process of uh, placing nodes in Maya and attaching several vertexes to them so their movement causes those vertexes movement. It is uh, completely clear that uh, what rig does is that it for instance attaches a node to these two vertices and attaches another node to these uh, uh, the other uh, two vertices. So then uh, those two controller nodes are attaching to each other. So for instance when I move this one the other one will also be influenced by the movement of the parent or child. So you see that in here if I just create a joint tool and say very rough, do not I know don't take the process seriously, just I want to show you the effect. You see it moves because it is now responsible because it is only one joint, so it becomes responsible for all the vertices. If for instance uh, I go to some places such as uh, now component distributed spreadsheet component uh, editor, I can just change the way it can influence the object. Uh, now it is not really important. I don't uh, recommend you to go through uh, details because uh, because we are working on basics. <coughs> Rigging is mechanization. Mechanically, we are making some relationships in a geometry, and as I have already told, and as I have already mentioned, there are several nodes, transform nodes, and those nodes are labeled as joints, and a collection of joints uh, makes a mechanical movement possible. Those mechanical movement then will move geometry. Okay. <clears throat> Let me go and explain this very important part. Find your suitable resolution. Now you know what, what actually a uh, joint is. Uh, but uh, uh, no, no. Let me explain a little bit more about rigging. Look at this rhino. Rhino, this animal in here. Uh, what I'm going to show you is that assume that this is uh, this is it's a skeleton. These are joints you you have placed in Maya, and I'm going to talk about this joint. In in this picture, this joint is responsible maybe for this region on the geometry of the animal. And this uh, part is possessed by this joint and this and, and you know the rest for the other joints. So moving this it may have a reason, uh, an effect on uh, yeah, an effect on geometry because moving of this one will affect the movement of this one, so this part is also affected by the movement of this part. You can understand the relationship. So find your suitable resolution. Now that you know uh, basically what is rigging, uh, you are going to take a resolution and its resolution seriously. What do I mean? When you, for instance, create an nervous sphere and render the Maya, you are dealing with resolution in several uh, ways. First is that uh, you, you, know, you have a resolution as size here, then have your resolution as sampling, and if you place a light,
you have resolution of shadows and resolution of mental ray area like if you use mental rays if you want to simulate cloth you have you know per steps and per frames sub frames and sub steps uh, that you know are in some way setting the resolution of a cloth simulation but for fluid and the other things resolution is is an inevitable part of each <coughs> move each uh, part in animation okay if I just go to skeleton and place several joints this this is called low res this is maybe uh, be labeled with low res rigging while this one might be high res or this one might be mid res I don't know I'm not speaking I delete so how many joints are you going to invest it is very important the more joints you place the better result you receive but the harder your job is and uh, the more difficult your management becomes Compute your time and project size. For instance, if I create a new camera, this is perspective one, then if I go to perspective and uh, go to perspective one, select the camera, then go back to perspective so that I can. So, uh, if I, if I have this camera, for instance, assume that this is my main camera in the animation. At this, for instance, uh, oh my, uh, What just happened? Sorry. Assume that you have this uh, camera. I'm going to delete this one. And then you have a sphere. This is, for instance, your main character. For instance, it's a human. If if you you if your character is in here and it you need a pulsing movement only on, on the character or on your object, you may go with lowers rigging using several small uh, joints. But if your character is here, but its movement is highly important, highly dynamic, and it moves a lot, and its movements are seen by camera. You may go and invest more joints. So uh, several things affects and affects on your uh, joint rigging resolution. First, the time of your project, the size of your project, the distance uh, of your objects in, <coughs> from camera, and uh, the amount of your character's dynamism. As I have said. Is your model's dynamism excessively remarking? Is your model a hero represented with a camera? These are really, really important. Naming pattern. Uh, I have asked, are you used to see things abridged? I mean, are you, uh, are you interested in using abbreviations? And are you used to use very small names representing long sentences? so that your mind uh, can understand what you are going to do <clears throat> for instance you write for instance uh, as, uh, for instance uh, I use the abbreviation MT as prefix of my scripts so I understand this is my name and this is a fixed prefix I, I have used it for instance you use uh, abridged names, shortened names for your characters for your directional attributes and for your node style you may go as you like 
but it is very important uh, whether or not you, 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 you are interested also in using an explanatory fashion. Usually if you are interested in shortened form, their explanatory fashion has no place in your mind probably. Uh, but I like the second one. Names which are explaining the notes full necessities. How many parts do you satisfy your name? Usually I use my, my characters or objects name. Then uh, the position I use. If the position needs direction, for instance, right or left, I will add one and also note style. And I use usually line names. <clears throat> Basic understandings uh, as understanding of the joints. Joints are invisible beings whose movement causes a movement in the body to which they are internally attached. This means that regional influence of the joints is, is the most significant point in the points, point in rigging process. This is the area I have missed that. Means that uh, joints are not seen in render. Also, if you take a look at take a look at example here, you see joints attached to another joint. In between them, I have uh, I don't know some. It, it is a bone. The bone has no uh, mathematical purpose in Maya. Also, it is. Uh, not uh, rendered. It, it only shows the relationship between joints. It is joints. It is uh, for display purposes. Joints, but as, as I have said, are invisible beings who affect uh, some regional parts of the geometry. Regionally, they are important and also control. Control. Regionally, they are controlling the geometry. And this is if I render, you see, no, you, you don't see them. There are maybe curves. They're transfer modes. And if I go to you see here, understand that. Uh, you see, uh, they are they have transform attributes and disjoint. Then, at several transformational attributes, you see there is no shape, no touch it, and another joint. But it is a special transform, not because when you want to skin that, you will understand if this is a joint or not. Animating rig by themselves is impossible, if not a great never ending headache. Thus, upper elements manipulate their movement. What, does, what it tells is that, so okay, now you have made it, and you want to move this one. Uh, when, when I move this one, you need an upper controller, such as a nerve circle, to control the movement of this one. Because it is fully zeroed and you can control it easier. And you also could use a larger controller. For instance, another controller, this one. And larger controller that these two are parented to that. And moving that one, move this one, scaling them, you see. Will affect the movement while this one, this one, then we are going to rotate that. There are kind of many useful things that you will see in this tutorial. Now you may be a little bewildered by what you are seeing. The rigging needs a very, very acute manager. You must be a person who can organize things clearly because two things are important in rigging. First, the person after you, a person who, who arrives in in the scene a file after you so you must be a very very clear cut person even in your small project you need sometimes animators for instance your friend knows Maya and can animate then you invite him or her to your project and tells him or her that okay you animate what I have rigged and he comes or she comes to the project and understand that oh nothing is understandable names are fully fully vague or <laughs> even maybe they're not even named so I recommend you uh, naming, uh, to choose a variable naming pattern for yourself so that they can understand, so that you can, uh, um, 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 you can execute a very great management. Joints in there are small constitutive elements of skeleton. Several joints, as you have seen already in Maya, built a skeleton. So uh, I complete this tutorial using several scripts. 
without a script, it is very hard to do rigging because rigging needs control, and control is well done with automated processes achieved via ML. You can download, down, download, download, download all the scripts uh, used in this tutorial from this uh, web address, artixel.wordpress.com category map. Let's say the scripts that I use in this tutorial are empty local rotation axis, empty control curves, empty set driven key, and empty parenting facilitator. So this facilitator uh, is a very nice and time-saving script. Also, so the ribbon can control curves are good, but this parenting facilitator is mostly recommended. I will use it a lot in this tutorial. <clears throat> so I jump into my answer, so what we could do in this tutorial. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do in this tutorial is uh, make a cubic model very simple, but do a very nice rigging on it. So, this is partly achieved. <coughs> no. Just fill it down with interface. Uh, sorry. I'm going to insert edge loop. Edge loop. Edge loop. Edge loop and edge loop. So, a little maybe not clear, not clear, not clear. So good. It is good. I'm going to call it as I have already told. For instance, something like a snake, uh, main body, poly. So, this is poly. I'm going to use. I'm going to create a null. Just uh, make are your object deselected. Go to edit and group. So you will have a null group. Call it geometry. However, I have only one geometry. But for the sake of training, I will make another one for joints. Okay. I'm going to scale it in join tool and let me so before that I'm going to add it, this geometry into a new layer uh, call my layer snake body layer snake body layer snake body layer okay uh, make sure that your menu is set to animation and so that you can access a skeleton menus. Go to skeleton and select join to. <coughs> Place it here. Uh, and, and the beginning of the geometry. Then here and go to the third uh, loop. Then keep on the process until you reach the end of geometry. Now you have a full uh, a full row of joints attached to, to each other. Child parent, child parent, child parent. I like this. Okay. So what is important, as I've already told in here, naming pattern, is that we must name things. So changing the name is important. I usually uh, move to last joint, select it, and come to outliner, and I will and I would press F so all uh, the hierarchy of the the parent, which is this one, uh, are expanded. Make uh, know that when uh, your joint is, full, is fully selected and no white selection is. Uh, displayed, it means that <coughs> you have uh, selected your uh, parent. Do, uh, don't be trick. Don't be. Uh, you know, it, it might seem a little dubious uh, because uh, you are, it seems that you have selected all joints, but no, you have only selected these joints. And moving it, only select. You know, take a look. Uh, Memorize uh, this 
the XYZ of this one and I will move it. Uh, so this one is changed. No, this is not changed because you have to uh, move this one. When all of them are selected, there are a bunch of green and white selection like this. The, the last selection is green and the other are white. This is also called hierarchical selection, which you can access from edit select hierarchy. So you can select this one, go select hierarchy, and it will get the full selection. If I select all of them here, it is uh, the, uh, the same, you know, it's a similar to hierarchy. No difference. <coughs> Good. If you want, uh, if you need to change a one, a one a joint, uh, individually without affecting uh, its children like this can he insert in your selection and uh, move them until repressing of enter you have access to individual movement of joints as you hit insert you can back to same move tool or rotator scale or whatever tool you have that uh, selected before Period to insert pressing. Good. Mm, I'm going to call it snake. Snake is the name of our character, which is a cube, cubic snake. Then I'm going to to, to uh, type or write its position, which is root, because it is behaving as a root. And then I'm going to write uh, the node type. What node is and what node uh, it is. Uh, it is a joint, so I don't write joints fully, but JNT is enough. I have renamed it. I go for the rest. If, if you have uh, 100 joints, you still need to change all of them. So I just change root to A. Sorry, B. D F and I write again another last position which is stiff. If it was a real body then I would have used for instance chest A B C or for instance neck A B C and like this. But because root is only here and stiff is only here, so I use individual letter for the betweens. Good. You see, they are completely selected. Rotating them, you see, a very nice rotation. Uh, so now that I have selected them, I go and drop uh, and uh, put this one under the joints. Make make the root child of joint, and so I can the hierarchy. It's the same, but it has one more parent, which is joints. It's not important. It's all. So now that we've placed joints, uh, it is very, uh, very important for us to check the directional behavior of the joints and their uh, you know, axes in respect to each other. What do I mean? If I select one individual joint and uh, go to display, transform display, and say local rotation axis. You see that I have turned on its local uh, transformation axis. Do I mean the the tendency of this joint to move, scale, or rotate in its own position, regardless of the work position? So, if I select this one and local rotation axis, so we see it is exactly like this one. If X was pointing upward, then when I rotate it in X, it would have a different rotation <coughs> from this one because the, the X was different from this one. However, uh, if I select a rhetoric and go to local rotation axis, you see all of them are like each other. If they were different, 
and we will have probably take some time to change the uh, to change the local rotation axis. I'm going to save the scene, go to new scene, and turn uh, and read skeleton joints and draw uh, several joints so that we would have something like this then display them let me in here select so library key and in here local rotation axis so we see that in, in for this joint x is pointing uh, quite um, in the x word space but in this for this joint z is in a set of the x word space and quite a little bit of the other are behaving quite the same uh, so for making it uh, for making it right and straightforward what I could do is that select this joint uh, is uh, now changing our selection a type to component and click on question mark <coughs> select this sees individually and type in here type uh, you know because we, in order for make it making it like that one we need to rotate it manually and in order to in order to do this what uh, what is important for the animator is uh, for the rig, uh, rig artist is that they understand uh, the the parent or the next joint so, x is pointing outward, it means that x must rotate 90 degrees upward. So, our rotation is casted in <coughs> y. I think it just is a little about something like this. Type rotate uh, at a flag, I mean, I mean a hyphen and r. Then, x, y, uh, z are represented like this in mill. So what we could do is that we select this one and uh, tell it to rotate 90 in a negative 90 0 0 in X. Oops. Mm, this just didn't work. Uh, sorry, no, I made a mistake. And my mistake was that I told to rotate it in Y, but I myself. We rotate it in X. So select it and rotate it. You see, it is uh, like that one, although it is different. But I'm just mean some uh, now mathematical computation to show you how to rotate. It. Otherwise, you know, um, in other words, you could do it with hand. You get you did exact exactly to be matching that one. So, because usually we do not have rigs such as this one. Why? Because our model usually are deformed using rigs and turns into such shapes. Usually, uh, uh, we have logical uh, models. Then, with rigs and joints, we change them to some I don't know supernatural maybe shapes and forms. So, such deformation is quite impossible. It's not impossible. But we rarely face such deformations or such models. Anyway, but again, this wasn't a scientific way of doing that. Change your selection type to object, select a rare key, and turn up all the local rotation. You have the model, turn up grid, then back to rare key mode and <coughs> turn on the local rotation X. Click on that one and go to skeleton and uh, arrange joint. Reset it so if you have changed it, it's going to be. I want the primary axis to be X and secondary axis to be Y. Arrange children of the selected joints. It's very important. Rearrange the local scale axis. It is again important. So I go and apply. <coughs> you see, it, it is just the same. But if I change it, for instance, to Y. It changes, but this one does not change. Okay, 
Uh, now for this one, I can select it, go to orange. Sometimes this works that you go to skeleton, orange joint, and uh, it orange joint work, and it did so it's, it's exactly the same orientation. See, again, they are still working the same. So I like it. So now I think you have a basic understanding of what local rotation axis will does and how it is important and how it will affect your computer rotation relationship. <clears throat> okay, now I can go and mm, skin, bind skin, smooth bind, and simply attach it. So now I can, when I select a rare key, kinetic rare key, move it, you see that it moves with that one. But hey man, this is not the end of. Uh, the job because it is very hard to animate this cube using uh, the rigs and also it is not possible if possible it is not possible in more complex models what indeed I am going to do the template is that I will add an individual country for each of them how? Just uh, <coughs> pay attention to what I say. If I go to create nerve uh, primitives and circle, so circle. What I do is that I I, <coughs> I select circle, and then this joint. This is the process, the usual process, and I go to edit and hit parent. And then I zero out all the attributes so it goes to its origin. Because of the direction, I'm, I want to change uh, the direction of circle so it points uh, in the same direction as joints. But if I change the shape, uh, shapes, transformational attributes, my parenting relationships just uh, uh, mismatch to joints. So what I do, I, I do a trick and I Select control points and I select sh uh, shapes, specific attributes, which is control points. It, this does not affect the transformation or attributes of the shape. So, you know, up here, you see, I have nerve circuit. I, I must not change tra uh, translate, rotate, and escape. But if I uh, modify, uh, Go and uh, do nerve circles shape and change it. There's a comp component, it, it will not be affected by that. So then, if I just select the circle and this joint, go to constraint and parent constraint it. Oops, uh, pop, 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 pop. <coughs> Sorry, I forgot. Then, after um, you know, putting it in center and this joint, I can go to edit and unpack. Sorry. Uh, let me uh, tell you something, say you something, uh, tell you something. <coughs> uh, I, pa I parented this one to this one, so this became parent of this one. And I changed uh, the control points of this uh, circuit. This is, there was an extra step. It is completely, uh, it's completely, uh, to yourself, you can do it or not, because most of the time your directional um, match or appropriateness is achieved. But sometimes, like our case, when it is not achieved, we can uh, do a rotational change prior to our parenting phase, or we can parent it and then change the control uh, control vertexes or the points. It is fully, uh, completely uh, to yourself. Uh, so now it is unprinted. I can select this one and this one, and uh, uh, parent constraint. You see, this parent is different from this parent, and also the their uh, order also again differs from each other. For this parent, you must select your child and then parent, but for constraint, parent constraint, you must select your parent and then child. So now, if I just move it, you see this moves. 
now I have more control over my joints because in here a conference is go to here and say this transformation that is a movement it's not important now because I'm going to talk about something else uh, but uh, in here I have two problems first circle is not a uh, is not an explanatory graphical shape it's very simple and ugly because in process of work you must have access to beautiful or at least uh, explanatory optics or something that uh, invites your mind to more work not uh, prevent it from more uh, engagement good uh, I don't like circle so animators and rig uh, people <laughs> rig people riggers maybe they usually come and uh, okay they, they sit down before the PCs and they create curves, curves of their own interest. I have done this. I have made a universal script. Everybody could use it. Just uh, going, just by just uh, clicking on empty screen. Could do curves. You you have access to five different curves. A circle is one of them. Q plus hand and arrow plus is one of the greatest of them. Uh, one of the usefulness of this curve is that you uh, can set a corner for it. For instance, in our case, I can say a snake root because I'm going to make a contour for my root. And if it, it's an add a group uh, pacifics, a staky pacifics, that later on I will tell you what uh, it does mean. And also a pacifics for, for the main shape, which is a curve. Now you do not have access to it. But you must uh, type an underscore at the end of your name so that these uh, people in here <coughs> receive an underscore before them. So that you will have a clean naming display. Good. Uh, so I literally delete this one because I hate it. <coughs> Let me go to Photoshop and I'm going to show you something. When will uh, white? When you have sphere? No, let when you have a joint and then you make a controller for it for it so a controller. Controller. So this has transform, translation, and rotation. Scale is not used at all. So if you, you directly change this one and this one, you will eradicate all your further uh, modification on your joints because you are literally <coughs> pushing your joints into an unclear board. What do I mean is that when you attach a control to it, so we'll have a better access to your translation and rotation of the joint. Because this one has a translation and rotation as well, which is free. But later on, if you want to, for instance, do some of the other things with the control, again, you have always eradicated your chance of survival. So what you will do is that you be usually, in rigging, make three notes. So one is this, one is group, and another is group. Two transformers. For these two, uh, because they're not important to be seen, so we will use a note. But for this one, what the purpose of better display for better uh, display? We use a shape. You may use even a lo locator. It's up to you. So we make this one child of this one. And this one, child of this one. Usually, this is head for parenting and other purposes. This is usually for set driven key and mathematical and mechanization, and mathematical relationship and mechanizations. And this is for direct parenting. To add this. 
node. So, what this script does, it automates all the process that I have told you in Photoshop. What do I mean is that in here I'm going to create a plus for this one. So I hit plus and we create a plus. But if I go to Outliner, you see that it has made 30 nodes. That made a snake root group, snake root staky, and snake root curve. It is good, I think. Make sure that you have selected the head node, which is snake root group or GRP. GRP. So uh, select this one as because this now serves as a child group node. It's a father of two already children. But it's now has to become child. So like this group node and that's like the root joint. <coughs> so you can go to edit and uh, remember what I'm going to do. Remember this steps. Edit balance. Then zero out from translate to translate to rotate Z. Sit exactly in the position of this joint. <coughs> the close joints you see now now it is a child love, you see the relationship? In here it's child love exactly this one. Go to edit and unfile it. So what I have done, let me explain. I've, I've created this one, made this one the child love uh, first joint. If it passed for the second joint, I would uh, have done it for this one, but because it passed for root, I did it for root. Then uh, I zeroed out all the attributes. This one, then I unparented it. So I just wanted to put the position to the uh, I, I just transformation, and I wanted to match these two. So parenting it just did that. It made no special relationship because we have already got relationship. Okay. Now I, I'm going to make a real re relationship between this one. You might you might ask yourself why in the first phase I used the group. Now now I'm going to use a curve because I want uh, I, I want to make this root node child of an upper node. And if I Make it to child at this group. So these two nodes. Let me let me do that. Let's see what happens. If I make this one to child at this one, what happens is that uh, in here you see here uh, group node. Select like group node. You see, but these two nodes are the the staky is. Uh, In the same stage as this one, it's a little complicated. I don't want, to go, I don't want to go too much deep in, the, in that. I just undo, get done, but I don't. So uh, I want to select curve and select this one. Go to construct and parent construct. So now it is smooth. As I have already done, I just change the specific nerves. Tribute so what a coincidence nice latest place there move it smooth good so let's uh, repeat the process I go to here and just say snake a twenty Sorry, hey, hey, it's good now. It's very cute. Cute. Oh, do not scale it. Just change it to specific. Uh, now it's like the group node here. So I don't want to go. Make it parenting the zero and get out and out parent. As I have told you, I have a script called empty parent facilitated. Click parent, then zero the attribute, you see they are zero and out, and out parent. So you see how fast it happens. B and 
created with the same modification. Strip modification. Here, select this one. Very fast. Sorry, I undo. You know, I made a mistake. It was that here I must change set as like group. See, here yeah, I have done that, and here yeah, it's good. I do that. I select the curve and the groups and sticky where they are unused. It is a great mistake. Yeah, I try to not to make. Such a mistake. Select group node, disjoint out, and go to B. Good. Color. F, so in here I left E, uh, so in here I just put F. And I go to Q. I admit the relationship is alike. <coughs> so, uh, what uh, what I do? I want to make a relationship between the controls that I have made, exactly like the, uh, the relationship which is existing between these joints. So, if this is which I like, this one, I want make this one and make this one the child of this one so what I do is select the group node of this one select the shape node of this one and I'm going to parent facilitator with parent do not zero out around parent it's just parent and select the group node parent then parent parent Then and do out. So I have made the exact relationship. When I see how, just let me select my rubber key and let's see exactly the same like that. So in here it seems that so I think it's possible. So here you see the exact relationship. I have already pan transferred this one to this one, so I select the curve and transfer this one to hit G on your keyboard so it repeat the last action. So with this one, select the rarity key first, go to rotate. Y is to the right, which is this. Saving. So now you wanna make a 
as well. So here you want to make the rule as so uh, this is an individual control placement. Now you want to hold full uh, control which has access to all of them, to all of these individual uh, attributes. How? Just go to my uh, two controls of two versions of control curves. So now I have I have this control curves here. I want to want to create a just arrow. Maybe. Uh, I want to create my arrow. So I go to core name and type. Uh, let's say snake. Controls. So, there is no what controls handle. Let's say <laughs> I create an arrow. So, uh, I'm going to delete this too. Sorry, I should shift, shift, shift P to on parent curve and I will delete this one so I will have all of this one. I move it right here and I duplicate that one. Zero. And so this will move it, move this one in this direction. And this one will move it in this direction. So how you will understand. So select on the attribute and go to back and I select it. Do this for easy attributes. Also. So we have two nodes and possible uh, lock to move and also attribute free checkbox free. Select this one and go to the attribute. And I have a name for it, call it up and down. Up and down. So up and down. Minimum is 10, maximum is 10, default is 0. Add. Uh, so I will look at the same process for this one. Right, left. 10 is minimum and so select this one. Uh, I I must make a set driven key relationship between this one and all these group nodes. I will uh, finish one set driven key with using Maya's own set driven key procedure, but I will complete the rest using my own script because it is much faster in it and a bit uh, appreciate appreciate it sure so don't be afraid to use a new script a new script and um, most uh, you know often let's say a new script often will accelerate your profile and, and you, will, you will love it because the scripts are automating your process or adding new uh, features to, your, to Maya's already procedure Okay, I will select, uh, I will go to animate and uh, do a key. I will select the first one. Uh, hit the load driver because it will drives the transformation. I will take this one, but not it. But I'm going to select it. Snake root to key. And I will do a key for it. So, in which direction it is rotating? So take my Z and I just select Z up and down. Then both of them are zero to the key. Then go to this one in here, select this one and up down, turn for it, back to here to the Z and put ninety for it, and again key. Back to this one into the attribute and put it down for it and go to the curve to the wiki 
could make it 90 for it. Uh, then again, key. So what will happen in here is that we're going to get such movement, such control over this. So I will complete the rest. Uh, so it is, it is as 3, 3.7. So if I go to calculator, so B divided by 7, which is 12. <coughs> so I just tell 10. What was the calculation about? What about that? So I select the second curve and go to stack key. Hit F to reach it. If you need to select it, not and usually the upper one is stack key. If you have followed that. Key. So you have seen how it is done using my own specific key. But now let uh, use my own script. Sorry, it's a key here. So now let's use my own screen. Uh, select the driver, then select the ribbon, and it get objects. Go up and down, you select up and down, and uh, select here, select protect D, then for top and more zero, uh, set T. Okay, then make this one 10, make this one 20, and uh, set T. Then negate the value and it can set the key. You see how much faster it is. Now, uh, of course, this is not what I want. Let me just move. You see, it is exactly. Like that. So I'm going to repeat the same procedure again. Select this one. Outliner, hit F, which selected not, but select the stage. So select this one, select the stage second one and get objects. Okay. When you've done that, up down and hit the set key. Then menu set key. Negate the value and set key. Select this one. Select the outliner, hit F. See you've selected it. So just get objects. Go to D. Key 10 and key the key get the values the key the key and uh, get objects so there's it the key so this one the key and the key 10 and key Set key. Negate the value, set key. Go to this one, set F. And set this one, and set a key. Get objects. Uh, sorry. Set this one, and set a key. Get objects, up down, and then go to rotate Z. And again, do the same. So key, and then key, uh, key, get the value, set key. So it's like the last one, and here. Set key, get objects, set key, then set key, set key, negate the value and set key. So now if I just turn up and down, you see it moves exactly as I like. But I'm going to repeat the same process using this one. But then this time on, it's why. Let's say show only what has stake key. Uh, it's a little bad, but it's still usable. So 
question for you. Yeah. So, this is a stupid satellite. So, select, select this one, root, set objects, right, left, rotate, Y, set key, 10, empty, set key, that's good, set key, data value, set key. Then, let's get this one. And for that, set key, set object, set y, set key, 10, key, set key, get the value, set key. Then select this one, set so the key, set object, set y, set key, then <coughs> set key, get the value, set key. Grabbed it. Set key. Set key. Get the value. Set key. Grabbed it. Set key. And sorry, ten. Oops. And key. Set key. Get the value. Set key. And this T and this T is just like this one. Left stay key, set objects, set Y, set key. Then, sorry, T, set key. And get the value, set key. And eventually for this tip. <coughs> uh, get objects. Set Y, set key. You know, I made a mistake. Let me finish this step. Set key, make it a value. Set key. Uh, then it goes for up and down. Controller, I made a mistake and just uh, connected to this visibility. So I just this is a common mistake. I break connection. I don't know. Turn it on. <coughs> so so what I do is that select this one. Select the state key, get object, remember, it was like this for project Z. I set key, then, empty, set key, and I make it to value and set key. So, uh, most of our process is finished. Here, I uh, combined. Process I could, uh, for instance, make relationship only between person and these two. So the model tends from have to have this, but I just I think it's enough for this tutorial. Uh, let's make an animation for it. And render it, and I will put it in the end of the in this video. So have good time, and hope you enjoy. You've enjoyed this tutorial, and have learned useful parts. See you.